Uh, we use Eventbrite, so uh, every time we get 50 tickets sold, I kind of roll the dice and 25 people show. So it, it's been varying, but uh, I see some new faces, which is awesome. Um, who hasn't? I know, you're, I'm new. You're, you're new. You're new. You? And you? Very nice. Welcome. Up in the back. Can I have? As your last name. Okay. The first time. Very good. <laughs> so it's good. Kind of new. Well, I'm glad you're here. And I hear the elevator, so we might have a few more people uh, come in. So, um, a little bit about this, coffee and content. Um, I've been in this business for, geez, like 14 years now. And uh, I, on Target creates content for all of its clients on a regular basis. So it may be podcasting, maybe written content, graphics, et cetera. And, you know, over the years, I, I kept watching the, you know, five tips on how to do X. And then, you know, you've, you've read this content, right? Like the stuff that makes you nauseated now, right? So over time, I just kept digging and dig, digging deeper as an agency and we're like, we have to get this stuff more human, right? We have to connect with people on an emotional level with all of the content that we create. Um, so I, I created this because I wanted people to come in and be able to contribute ideas and bounce stuff off of each other and um, really help us all to create better content and no matter what industry you're in, legal, um, Banking, except, I mean, how do we connect with human beings? And so this is why I created this, and I love the fact that you, Nikki, uh, came back too, which we appreciate. I didn't want to. But. I know you didn't. <laughs> but Nikki is actually on Target's newest team member, oh, so uh, okay. really, really excited to have her. Um, so one quick story. I have many stories, but let me share one. Um, I was with a prospect. It was last Thursday, and um, we met at the Starbucks. And he's got this really cool product. And it's a mobile tire changer, basically, right? We're sitting there talking, and we're talking about his demographic. Now, this guy's got a background in engineering. He's brilliant, really, really intelligent. Didn't take many marketing classes, and I'm not picking on him for that. <clears throat> but he's kind of having some challenges with how do I market this? So I start talking to him, I'm like, what have you been doing? You know, how have you been marketing this product? And, and he says, well, you know, everybody in Central Florida needs their tires changed. Okay, well, that's not a false statement. So I, I start poking it, poking at it a little bit deeper. I'm like, so tell me about everyone. Well, everyone has a car. Everyone has tires. Everyone needs those changed. And he's like, I've been doing this for two years, and I'm just not getting any, I'm not getting any momentum. I said, okay, well, here's rule number one about marketing. Everyone is not your customer. And when I said that to him, he instantly like got deflated. And I'm like, I don't mean any disrespect by that, but I'm like, I understand that your product is amazing. I understand that everyone has a car and everyone has tires. And so everyone is not your customer. What does that mean? That means we have to find the right perfect audience to craft the correct content for. So in his case, you know, People that live in higher end neighborhoods that have maybe BMWs or higher end vehicles would really benefit from his service because the rest of us would go sit at Tire Kingdom and wait for three hours, <laughs> right? So, uh, and drink that crappy coffee that you have. You ever, it always smells, it's terrible coffee. And then the floors are always sticky. You sit on the couch and you think there's a science experiment happening there. but. The, the point is uh, that, I, that I wanted to convey to you guys this morning is that when you sit down to create your content, you can't write it for everybody. When you sit down to market your product, it cannot be for everyone. It has to be, you have to pick a niche, you have to fine tune that audience. And I know that may sound really elementary, but it's really amazing to me how many people just don't grasp that, especially with the internet. I mean, we can sling articles all day long. Eric Decker can write a brilliant piece but if it's not guided towards a specific audience and a specific person, uh, we're, we're not going to connect. You know, we're going to just blend in on the internet. So, anyway, that was one story. My second story, uh, and then I'm going to have you all introduce yourself. But this leads up to our presentation, um, and I was sharing this with Mark earlier. Um, two years ago, we had this air conditioning client, and we're building a website for him. 
and uh, doing the marketing and creating content, et cetera, all the stuff we do. And they do uh, duct cleaning, which is kind of, for being honest, sometimes like smoke and mirrors and really not, the industry's kind of seen in a crappy light. So we're building the site and he's adamant to put this one image on the website. And me, I've done my first rodeo, I'm like, where did you get the image from? Is it, you know, whatever you send over to me, just know that the onus is on you, not me. Because I, I get nervous every time a client slings a, a photo over to me. So, oh no, yeah, we got it, we found it. <laughs> Whatever. So we found, it. we found it. We acquired it. So we installed the image, and it's a petri dish with a little bit of mold in it. So he was trying to convey this is living in your lungs, this is in your ductwork, blah blah blah. This image, guys, no joke, was probably like 72 pixels, like like that tall. It looked like crap, and I hate doing that, but they're out of it. So we put it up. Two weeks goes by. I check the mail. And there's a nice letter from Getty Images that tells me that I need to take that image down immediately. Oh, and by the way, the fine for this particular image is $795, payable today, blah, blah, blah. So I was telling Mark, I was like, well, we'll just slide in there and take that image down like it never happened, right? And uh, republish the website. So another week goes by, and that wasn't enough. They sent me the second letter, you will pay, blah, 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 and then the fines can keep climbing, whether you took it down or not. So the point is, we're going to talk about that this morning. <laughs> we are going to talk about that this morning. So uh, really how to protect ourselves, how to keep any content we create um, up, up, you know, legit. Right. Right? Yeah. So um, I also want to call out the jelly beans, which... Are provided by Advanced System Solutions, um, <laughs> sponsoring this. One of the finest uh, computer networking and jelly bean distributor. Jelly bean distributor <laughs> in Central Florida. So Tom, Tom, Kitt, Tom, and I do a podcast every Friday called the T Squared Tech Talk Podcast. So make sure you subscribe. It's it's a lot of fun. Yeah. We take Tech Talk from up here and kind of just bring it down to a human level uh, and have a blast doing it. But Tom knows I have. Two lovely daughters. Hey, welcome. How are you? How's it going? Um, he he brings in, and I'm not exaggerating. I think 30 pounds of freaking jelly beans. Oh, to right. us. <laughs> so, but they're delicious and they smell amazing. So thank you very much, Tom and Advanced System Solutions. So why don't we get started? Introduce yourself, and then we'll we'll go around the room and we'll get to the meat and potatoes. Yeah. Uh, you're saying I'm not the meat and potatoes? I, I say, I say, yeah, <laughs> you're a portion of leading up to. You can the asparagus. I'm the appetizer. Um, hi, I'm Nick Jorgidiu. I do a radio show on WPRK, which I turn into a podcast. Uh, I also write for a couple of magazines here in town and uh, do a lot of other things. Basically, anything that people need right now. Hi everyone, I'm Danielle Ziss. I'm a writer and performer, and I produce and host this show, Orlando Story Club. So if any of you are storytellers, please come talk to me at some point. Love to get you on the stage. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. I'm Nikki. I'm the marketing director for Golf Case Credit Union. Um, PhD on Cody with the you go. And I'm also an Instagram influencer with Orlando Vegan, so go to you guys for being vegan in Orlando. Welcome, Nikki. My name is Adrian Gonzalez. I'm the e-commerce manager at Digital Industries in Central Florida. And a lot of people don't know we sell stuff online, so I run own Rocky's Retreat. We are a dog boarding and daycare business in Orlando. We also have the only indoor heated pool for dogs in Florida. So we do therapy work with dogs um, that have um, arthritis and things like that. So um, because I'm the owner, I see everything. Um, so I do all of our blogs and content and um, been real, working really hard on growing our social because identifying your customers, crazy dog parents really love to see their dogs on social. Um, so that's been a great way for me to connect with my customers because not all dog, not everybody who loves dogs are like that level. Um, so it's worth, it's been a been an interesting journey connecting with that level. Welcome, and I'm glad you came back too. Thank you, Eric. Hi, Eric Decker's Pro Blog Service. I uh, own a content marketing craft writing agency. Uh, I 
also uh, published a book. Uh, I guess it was November of last year, and a new novel dropped in this month. Awesome. It'll be available on Amazon for print and ebook. Excellent. Welcome. Tom Craig, Advanced System Solutions. <coughs> we are a technology company that tries to help companies with wherever their pain points are and getting the job done. I also run the Orlando Power Lunch, which is a networking group on the first Thursday of every month. So if you have any interest in expanding your network with other people here in the Orlando area, check out the Orlando Power Lunch. And thanks for those of you who have attended that. I really appreciate it. And thank you for the diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Tom. Yeah. How about here? Um, I'm Chris Viso. I am a first year law student come at Florida A&M in downtown Orlando coming to the end of my first year and uh, I have a YouTube channel where I'm documenting and vlogging my law school experience but really interested in getting into this world of social media and the law and how the two are coming together so wow. yeah that's huge. very excited to be here and I'm sure Mark can attest very important yes <laughs> <laughs> how about you I'm, hi, I'm G. Marie Anderson. I'm a uh, broadcast and digital video content producer. Uh, I've done quite a bit of work at the Golf Channel and uh, as a producer, and I am uh, currently helping small businesses, personal brands with their video production needs for websites and social media platforms. Welcome back. Yeah. Let's see you over here. Amy Cingalani, Cingalani Content Solutions. I'm a writer, editor, proofreader. Uh, been doing it for a long time, long enough that I started on a typewriter. <laughs> Close. How about here? Uh, my name is Mason. I'm an audio content producer at On Target. I actually edit the T Square podcast with Tom Craig and Tom up here. So that's yeah. his favorite show of all the ones that he edits. Tom, <laughs> he does a heck of a good job of it. Yeah. Does. So that's what I do here. And uh, Mason came to us from Full Sail, so he had oh, a good guy. Thank you. How about here? Uh, my name is Mitch Buchanan and I uh, direct marketing and business development for two small startups out of UCF in Orlando. Um, UStub is the main one that I work for currently and what we are is we're a platform for event organizers to make additional revenue off of their in-person events via live streaming and video content by offering a paywall, um, creator control pricing, closed environment, those type of things. So. Very cool, welcome. Thank you. I, and uh, I actually just heard about this at like 8.50 this morning, so <laughs> to being a couple minutes later, I kind of rushed over here, so thank you for having me. Glad you came. Thank you. How about here? Hi, good morning. I'm sorry I was late. My name is Dixon. I'm from Canada, and I'm an independent artist. I recently started a YouTube channel documenting independent artists' journey with their own money, with their own knowledge of technology, and I just want to see how I can just expand what I'm doing. Excellent. Welcome. Canada, that's a long drive. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> My floor was hell. Yeah. <laughs> Always the worst part. And now the meat and potatoes. All right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so uh, Mark Miller's been coming to copying content, I want to say, last three. Over three, three. Oh, well, yeah, the last three or four months. Three or four yeah. months. Um, marketing director? Marketing director, yes. At Jordan Law. Jordan Law. Thank yeah. you. I'm going to try to get your name tag real quick. Um, so, you know, we, him and I have been talking a lot about how to really keep yourself protected legally um, and I know he's got an amazing presentation to kind of walk us through some of the pitfalls etc so Mark I'm really glad you're here and very grateful for your time and uh, you brought a whole bunch of yeah there, there's too, so. sunglasses out there if anybody wants to steal a couple please do um, so first things first uh, Tom was mentioning how he got a takedown notice from Getty Images if any of you ever get one of those call me we'll talk <laughs> Because we can usually negotiate those fees down. Uh, they're they're happy to take whatever money they can for the takedowns. So you know he didn't have to pay 800 bucks. He could have paid less, but that's two years ago. So we can't help that. Um, funny story. My law firm actually, one of our former attorneys, did something very similar uh, in putting up an image that belonged to somebody else. I don't remember who it was, but essentially for what she what we ended up paying for even after negotiation. They could have flown to Paris, take the picture of the Eiffel Tower themselves, and flown back. So do be careful about using uh, other people's work. But we'll, we'll get on to that. Um, so a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a St. Louis native. Lived there until I was 25. Moved to Phoenix for a decade. Uh, then my wife, uh, girlfriend at the time, decided to come out here to Barry Law School. We did the long distance thing for a little bit. Uh, then I ended up here. Married a lawyer, and now I do legal marketing. <laughs> um, started in 
internet IT back in the, you know, when I was like 18, 19, me and a buddy were building computers in our basement. Uh, then when I went to Phoenix, I worked for the second largest hosting company in the world. It's not GoDaddy, it's the other one that has all the different names. Um, then I started digital marketing with them for a while, and then for the last five, six years, I've worked specifically with attorneys. Uh, now, some caveats, I am not a lawyer. I work for lawyers. Uh, my talk is informational and it's about best practices. It is not legal advice from a lawyer because I am not a lawyer. Being here does not establish a client attorney privilege because we have to pay for that kind of privilege. <laughs> um, all legal situations are different, so if you have a specific situation, I can give you advice, I can talk to you about it, but you do need to talk to a lawyer about it. And of course, if you need a lawyer, ask me. I'll refer you to that. <laughs> yes. Did they make you say all that? They did not make me say a word of that. Really? I came up with that all on my own because I want to see why. <laughs> I'm sure that comes from years and years. Of uh, it does come from years and years of working with lawyers. Uh, first things first, what is copyright? Very simply said, copyright is the ability to copy, distribute, or alter a work that somebody has made. So photos, music, written works, etc. You know, just, just any artistic endeavor, your ability to change it or copy it, that's what copyright allows you to do. So what we'll cover today, we're gonna go over what's yours, what's not yours, what's kinda, and then the unknown and all the other stuff that's going on right now. So, your content, what is yours? Basics, copyright starts at creation. So as soon as you Put the brush to the tag. Take a picture. Anything. Start typing. You own that copy. That copyright is yours. It is yours to distribute as you wish. It is yours to copy as you want. It is yours to alter in the future. But <laughs> you should still register your work. You can do so at copyright.gov. Um, I don't remember the exact fee. I think it's $45 per work, but they do do bulk work. Uh, if you need help doing that, lawyers can help you with that. Um, registering your work gives you additional rights and it, it protects you so that when you know somebody else uses your image you can send them a takedown notice and charge them eight hundred dollars for using your picture Mark, Mark yes you no. that? yeah so, that copyright, I guess, so if you have a blog and you're creating multiple pieces of content on that blog mm -hmm. you have to register each individual entry because essentially that's 45 bucks each time is it Essentially, that is what they want you to do. Okay. Um, that said, uh, you, you because it's published and because there's a publication date on your blog and because archive.org collects that data over time, uh, you, you have some broad protection through that. But if you want to be able to solidify your right to cop your, your copyright rights. Uh, you do need to register each article, each piece of content. Now, do newspapers register every article that they've ever written? No, that's way too expensive. Do every blogger, you know, like every post on Facebook that they make, do they register that? No. Every art, every photograph at Getty Images, however, they register that. So you gotta be careful. And images are really the most stolen thing uh, out there because, you know, you can just go to images.google.com and boom, Look at all these pictures that I can use on my site. No, <laughs> don't do that. Um, so copyright, like I said, it establishes other rights, reproducing, adapting, changing, selling, sharing, uh, giving other people access to use your copyright on for their stuff, et cetera. Issuing takedowns. <laughs> uh, protection lasts a long time. We can thank this old guy. Uh, Protection right now lasts for 70 years after the artist's death. So, for example, Mickey Mouse won't come into the public domain until 2024 uh, because, you know, 70 years after Walt Disney's death. And uh, Sonny here is the reason for that, the, the CTEA, uh, right, right after he passed away was passed, um, pretty much because he died. Uh, if he hadn't, copyright would probably be a different era. Different thing right now. Don't they keep extending that too? That's what the CTEA was. Okay. It was an ex the most recent extension back in 1997, 8, 9. 
uh, that pushed it. It was, I think it was like 25 years, or no, it was 50 years before, and they pushed it to 70 years right. after the artist's death. And it also changed, like if it, you do something for a company or a government, um, their copyright is, I think, 120 years mm -hmm. from the time that it was created. So that's the difference between being an individual artist and being a company is if you're doing it for a company, it's creation date. If you're an artist, it's artist's death. <clears throat> so you don't have to publish to have copyright. You can write it on your computer and never distribute it. But if you have a confirmation of what date that was created, you can still you know, uh, claim copyright. Now, that said, if I take a picture and leave it on my you know, camera and put it on my shelf and never bring it out, and somebody happens to take the exact same picture, do I have copyright over their picture? No, they, they took a picture too. It just happened to be from the same angle for, of the same thing. So you know, be careful. <laughs> don't go after people that don't deserve it. Uh, infringement, infringement came, happened in the uh, medieval times. It's adding a little lace to a garment. That's infringement. Um, but altering somebody else's work does not necessarily give you copyright to it. Uh, Shepard Ferry got in big trouble with his Hope poster back in 19, or what, when did the rock get on lockdown? 2008? <laughs> uh, because he took this image from the AP and just basically painted over it. That's an infringement. That's not really an alteration to the work. There was a big legal argument about it. It never actually finished the trial because they settled out of court and decided to share the, the, the images. Uh, neither the AP nor Ferry wanted to finish that off, um, but basically he said, yes, I used your image, and they said, yes, we deserve money for that, so. Didn't he sue people over his design or somebody? Shepard Ferry's an interesting character. <laughs> uh, as with everything, there's an exception, so do be careful, you know. The law is all about exceptions. So <laughs> whatever you think you're doing, if you think it might be questionable, ask an attorney. They'll give you advice on whether or not it is legal or not. They'll charge you for that advice. But if it saves you $800, you know, $150 of an attorney's time is probably worth it. Yes, ma'am. What about the sites that you go and pay to get the images, right? If you're paying for an Because image, you're paying for their copyright license. Mm -hmm. okay. You're licensing that work. Okay. So, so if you go to iStock, Photo, or any of those places, mm -hmm. and you pay for that, you are, they're extending their copyright license to you okay. for the use that is allowed in that license. Do you need to, like, keep, like I have a membership to a site that I just like, <laughs> auto renews every month and I get 25 images. Do I need to, like, track all of that? Keep receipts. Just of my membership? Of your you membership. Okay. And so I, don't track, like, uh, I every think, download. do they not send you an email every time you download? I, I mean, some do, some don't. So no, I know that a lot of them will also show a history. Uh, a lot of them will also show the history. Like if you go to your yeah, I'm sure if I go into my account, into your account, you just history. see your download history and what images that you've give, been given the right to. If you ever cancel with them, go and get that first. Got it. So that you can say yes, I had uh, access to this image at the time. I put it on my site. You know, just because I canceled that, I still bought the license. It, also read the license agreement, because some of them will be, for the time you're a client, the license is extended, some will be it, you know, a permanent license, etc. Okay, other people's content. Do not use what isn't yours. If you made it, if you bought it, uh, if it was given to you and you have proof, you have that receipt, you have, you know, like your aunt saying, yes, you can use this image on just the notepad with her signature, uh, if it's in the public domain, or if it falls under Creative Commons license, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, those you can use, anything else, if you didn't pay for it, don't use it. Don't go to images, don't go to Google Images and just use the first image you see that you like. Don't do that, you don't know who bought that, you don't know who made that. If you bought it with a theme for your WordPress site, they have a license to that image to distribute, so you're good there, but yeah, just, just be careful. There are plenty of places that will allow you to get images. So if none of these apply, <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, in between stuff, Creative Commons. Does anybody know what Creative Commons is? Okay, can you, what is Creative Commons? So basically, whenever someone puts their work under Creative Commons, it enables them to, um, it enables everyone else to use that work for anything they want to, but then 
in doing so they have to make it so that their work is able to be used by anybody else? Sort of. Okay. <laughs> uh, so the Creative Commons this has different licensing types. Attribution, all Creative Commons licenses require you to attribute the original creator. So if you go to Flickr and take somebody's image under Creative Commons license, and you have to check if it's under Creative Commons license, uh, then you have to attribute it to that person. You can link to their Flickr account. If they have a personal blog, you can link to that. It's, it, but you do have to attribute to the original artist. Share alike is what he was talking about. Some licensing allows you to do what's called share alike. That means whatever you use their license, their image, their music, their whatever for, you can add a share alike license. And like if it requires a share alike license, that means whatever you create with their stuff also has to be a Creative Commons licensing with another share alike license. So if I sing, which nobody wants me to do, <laughs> uh, and put that on uh, SoundCloud under a Creative Commons license, share alike, and somebody wants to use that in a commercial, they can't because that, unless they say, everybody in the world can use this Geico commercial with Mark's voice on it. So Geico's not gonna do that, but, you know, uh, if any of you guys have podcasts and want to hear my horrible singing on it, uh, as long as your creative comment, as long as your guys' podcast uh, that I'm, you know, ruining, <laughs> also is a share alike license, so anybody can edit your your podcast in any way that they like, as long as there's attribution to you and to me, then we're good. Non-commercial. Some of the licenses require it to be non-commercial. So that means if you're making money off your blog, you probably can't use that image. You probably can't use that song. You probably can't use that video. If you're doing it for an art, another artistic work, if you've got, if you're, if you're going to Maker Faire and you're putting on a show, then you can use it because you're not making any money off of that. If I used it today, since I'm not making any money off of it, I could probably use that image. No derivatives. That means you can use my image, you can use my sound, you cannot cut it up, you cannot edit it, you cannot change the angle at which it's in. That's the image you can use, that's it. But you, and you still have to attribute me. So places to find licensed material with Creative Commons. Flickr, Flickr's my favorite, uh, because it lets you, when you go to the search bar at the top, as soon as you search something, there's a drop down list that says licensing and you can print pick whichever Creative Commons license you want. Remember, you have to attribute to the actual artist, so on whatever blog post you're posting, or you know, some places have a About Us page or another page where it's attribution page with, with all the links. Um, I do it in the blog post at the bottom. <laughs> Photo credit by, you know, so-and-so. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bandcamp, if you need music. Vimeo, if you need video. Uh, Wikimedia, if you need pretty much anything. Wikimedia is Creative Commons. And Skill Commons, it's open licensing for training programs. So if you have, uh, you, you need to learn how to do something, Skill Commons allows you to learn for free. It doesn't have everything on there, of course, uh, but there's a lot of good stuff on there. Public domain. Public domain is available for anyone to use in any way they want, no matter what. Uh, because the artist died over 70 years ago, because there was a copyright dispute and it never got resolved, and so the copyright licensing fell through. Um, you know, the company disappeared that was making it. I, I worked for a marketing agency for a little over a year, and one day my Slack channel was turned off. My company phone was turned off, my credit card didn't work anymore, and the offices were locked. Everything we created is now in the public domain because they went bankrupt. <laughs> so when that Disney one expires or whatever it is, mm -hmm. obviously Disney's gonna be interested in, can they reapply, how, how does that work? Like how do they so, reapply? No, they can't reapply. Mickey Mouse will technically fall into the public domain on January 1st, 2024. However, Mickey Mouse is now a trademark. Trademark does not die. So Mickey Mouse, Goofy, Donald, etc. The lawyers will have a fun time with that in a couple years. Because uh, 
you know, trademark's different than copyright. It's, it's the, there's some specificity around trademark that copyright doesn't really have. Uh, so you know, you'll be able to do stuff with Mickey Mouse that you can't do now, basically. You know, the guy who wrote, uh, who created the Creative Commons, mm -hmm. I can't remember his name, but he wrote a book, and what he predicted, I think, was that Disney will lobby Congress to extend the that's, 70 years to 90 years. That's what CTA was. Yeah. Disney worked we'll through again. Sonny Bono, yeah. because, who's also an artist and also had a very you know personal stake in copyright extension, because mm -hmm. um, some of his stuff you know, was, you know, he, he didn't think his grandkids were gonna benefit, basically. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, some works in the public domain, obviously all the writings of Shakespeare, he's been dead a long time. Wizard of Oz, Frank Baum's been gone for a while. Uh, Beat the Devil's a film. Dead Beat Does Dallas is in the public domain. <laughs> yeah. Copyright dispute over the use of the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders trademark in that made copyright go away on them. But if you want to distribute it, you have to get permission from the Dallas Cowboys because it uses their trademark look. Uh, Night of the Living Dead, we would not have the zombie movies and zombie films that we have if Night of the Living Dead hadn't fallen into the public domain because that type of zombie technically could be copyright. Um, so because of a, I don't remember exactly the details around why that falls into the public domain, um, but The Walking Dead probably wouldn't be a thing if it weren't for Night of the Living Dead falling into the public domain. Uh, so, Getty Images, we mentioned them earlier. They do have an area for education. It's pictures of all the artwork in the Getty Museum uh, that do fall into the public domain. Before you use it, make sure it's on that list. Go to their website, check it, read through what they're, you know, because some of them are, some of them aren't. They're very good about being helpful about it though, I will tell you that. So if you want to take a picture of you know, the Venus and put it on your site and it's one of their images, they'll work with you, make sure that you get the right one. Because some of them are, some of them aren't. So you make sure you check. Uh, Library, Library of Congress archive images, uh, they actually have a really good Flickr account if anybody's interested with pictures from the Civil War, uh, you know, art from all ages of the American history. It, it's amazing stuff. Do you have a question, sir? Two questions. Yes. First, anything the government takes is public domain. NASA images or the military? Or For the logos? most part, yes. There are some quirks around it with like different logos and stuff. Like you can't use the NASA meatball without their saying so. A picture of the but a picture, Mars. A picture of Mars, yes. If, if NASA took it. Now with SpaceX taking over and with you know Blue Origins and all those guys going up there now, some of the images you find online may not be NASA. Make sure you check. Uh, the other question was, if I take a picture of a piece of artwork, mm -hmm. like a, a Van Gogh. Yeah. The, I can take the picture and use that because that's that's public domain, but what if you took a picture of it and I used it? Is it my picture? I assume so. No, I took the picture of the Van Gogh. But, you took but it's picture. my picture. Correct. No. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll let you use my picture. All my stuff on Flickr is Creative Commons, but. <laughs> but, but if you look on Wikimedia Commons, you find this old artwork, somebody took the picture. Somebody took the picture. And, and somebody gave it to Wikimedia to use. Okay. So that's falling into the public domain. Yeah. So they, they gave it to the public domain. It's not public domain because it's of the art. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Basically, the answer is if I, if it's my picture, you can't use it unless I say so. If you took the picture, obviously you can use it. And Wikimedia, the pictures on there are verified public domain pictures. Uh, the unknown and the other stuff. Orphan works. Does anybody have any idea what an orphan work is? Okay. You don't know who created it? Exactly. We don't know who created it. Or we know exactly who created it. We can't find the guy. Or the company, like the marketing firm that I work for, they went belly up. We're not sure if there's a licensing agreement with somebody else. We think they took that picture of what that Coke can, but can we use it? Sure, go ahead. But if somebody comes around and says, hey, that's my picture, and they have proof, expect them, expect to write them a check. <laughs> uh, so just, you know, there's a lot of orphan literature out there, especially a lot of sci-fi from the 50s and the, you know, the 40s and the 50s um, that falls under this. Uh, and, you know, because those magazines went away and because they, you know, companies got bought out by other companies and we're not sure where that belongs, can you use those stories? 
go ahead. Somebody might come along and ask you to write them a check. Nobody might. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We've mentioned CTEA a few times. This is the uh, Sonny Bono the Act, the Mickey Mouse Protection Act. In other words, that extended copyright to 70 years after the artist's death. Uh, did I put the date when it was? Oh yeah, here's Mickey Mouse falls into the public domain on January 1st, 2024. You can expect Disney and other groups, Universal, to extend that. Uh, I don't remember when Superman falls into the public domain, because I don't remember when those guys died, but it's not far off either. Um, so do you think Universal wants to give up Superman? Or DC wants to give up Batman? All of those things were created by people. You know, every Spider-Man, like, like 70 years from this, from last year, Spider-Man and everything will fall into the public domain. Is Disney gonna give that up if they can? I mean, they've got seven decades to make use of it. Uh, yes? But if you look at Mickey Mouse from all that time ago, it's he looks completely different than the Mickey Mouse now. But so Walt Disney still created him. Right, but wouldn't every time they get an update, wouldn't that <coughs> renew the 70 no. years? Because it's the character creation. <coughs> okay. So if they, if they started calling him something different or creating him Because he was another, Mortimer Mouse before. Uh -huh. But it's still 70 years after his death. And it's, it's still 70 because the creator died. of the artwork died 70 years ago. Yeah. Well, I know, like uh, Sherlock Holmes, right? Eventually entered part of it, entered the public domain, and so there are certain things because the Sherlock Holmes estate <coughs> held on to the copyright for as long as they could, uh -huh. and then they finally lost the copyright battle, and it's. And that's where you get elementary and Sherlock Holmes the TV show well, and they were the other movies. Fees. Huh? They had to pay licensing fees. And For a little less, bit. The, the guy in Les <coughs> uh was putting together an anthology and the estate wanted a, uh, a, a licensing fee from him and he said no. Mm -hmm. We're yeah. fight this. They bought it and uh, the Holmes estate, the Tony Doyle estate lost. Right. So it's, it's like the last five years are still copyrighted. <clears throat> the first whatever or not, and so you can't mention that uh, John Watson played rugby because oh. <laughs> that was published in a later story. Uh, even if you were writing about young Watson, you can't, without paying a licensing fee, you, you could say he played sports because it was generic enough. And so uh, I, I was following the whole Sherlock Holmes copyright uh, thing was very interesting a few years ago. Yeah, yeah, and this year is the first year in. I don't know, 15 years that things are falling into the public domain for the first time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and personally, I think that's great because as with, you know, The Walking Dead and the other zombie shows, think of all the artistic works that have been spurred by the ideas that were created by somebody else that they couldn't do anything with because it was copyrighted. You know, so all the stuff that, Disney's do, that Disney owns, as it falls into the public domain over time, you know, I'll be able to write totally different stories than somebody before me was. Uh, you know, people will be able to do amazing things with Mickey Mouse that they're not able to do right now. Um, you know, there, there are ideas out there that people want to do these things, but they can't because they're afraid of getting in legal trouble and never being able to go to Disney World again, which I can appreciate. You know, yeah. <laughs> we've got passes. I go all the time. So, um, but yeah. Uh, so back to the CTA is the one that extended it. DMCA, Delid uh, Digital Millennium Copyright Act. This is possibly the worst written act in all of history. <laughs> it gives the ability to copyright uh, access to things by, basically, um, you know, John Deere copyrights their tractors, right? Of course they do. To fix a tractor, you have to go to a John Deere shop because to take it apart, you're breaking copyright because you're, access, you're accessing a copyrighted work. Huh. Like I said. It's the worst. Yeah. So now there are right to repair laws that are going through. John Deere actually stopped fighting that battle a while ago. Um, oh, I know why it is. It's because the copyright on the computer software that you know gives you the ability to manipulate it, information on the on the tractor. Like, in, if you access that in a certain <coughs> way that John Deere doesn't allow, you're breaking their copyright by accessing it. Uh, there's a company, I think it's, I don't remember if it's Medtronic or one of the other ones, they created an insulin pump. Now the guys who created insulin, uh, they put that copyright right in the public domain. They said, this is a life-saving 
thing everybody should have access to who has diabetes. World, take it, please have it. Medtronics or whatever their name is created an insulin pump that you cannot refill the cartridges because the way that they have the cartridges set, uh, once it's empty, it knows it's empty. The pump knows it's empty, so you cannot refill that and put that back in because it's this is an empty cartridge. I can't refill. I can't use it. So you have to buy new cartridges from them. It's like printering. Finally, somebody passed a law a little while ago that allows you to refill your printer ink. There, there was, uh, if you listen to Marketplace on NPR, uh, a year or two ago they went through the whole printer ink debacle. Uh, you know, most of us still buy printer ink <laughs> you know, from Best Buy or wherever, uh, but you don't have to. You can get it refilled now. Uh, they finally broke that, you know, saying that it was right that you could have. Um, but yeah, you can't copy a D DVD. You can't fix your John Deere tractor can't refill your insulin pump without breaking the DMCA because it's just such a weird, poorly written law. Article 13, who knows what Article 13 is? It's been in the news lately if you know what you're talking about. So this is going to break the internet, period. This is the EU rule that says that you cannot use anybody else's stuff ever without buying a copyright to it. So any meme, you know, which is, a conversion, creative work, can't be used. And it puts the onus on, not on the person who made the meme, it puts the onus on YouTube, on Facebook, on Flickr, to have a database of all copyrighted works and compare your image or your story or your article against that database and say, you can't use that, you can't use that, you can't use that. Now, if anybody's ever put a video on YouTube and had a takedown notice, you know how weird it is. Like, uh, yeah, if, does anybody listen to This Week in Tech? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, This Week in Tech is a big show. It, I mean, it's, you know, Leo Laporte is out in uh, California. It's one of the biggest tech podcasts out there. They have put every, all their stuff up on YouTube. They've gotten takedown notices from YouTube because YouTube runs it against their database of copyrighted works. Uh, and they'll, you know, sometimes they'll show a video of, you know, something on CNET or this or that or the other, CBS, NBC, anything. And because that video is playing in the background while they're having a news story talking about this video, they get it taken down. They actually lost their YouTube uh, access for several weeks, maybe a couple months, a little while ago, because of one of these takedown notices. They're a news program. They're allowed to talk about stuff but they got takedown notices because these databases suck and the algorithms that run them suck and the AIs that they're trying to build them, they're nowhere near where they need to be. Now, putting the onus on Facebook to you know, take down every meme that uses SpongeBob, every image in the world is gonna be taken down. <laughs> you know, uh, and Facebook and all these, uh, you know, Google, YouTube, everybody, they're going to have to go for the most hardcore laws that are passed. Now, each individual country within the EU has the ability to pass an individual law around Article 13. France is gonna get theirs out fast, it's gonna be the worst, and everybody's gonna have to adhere to it. So basically, unless you take a picture of your, you know, that you took, and it doesn't look like anybody else's picture ever, you can't post on YouTube ever, or you can't post on Facebook anymore. They're gonna fight it. You know, they're, they'll go through the courts. It'll take a while to actually be enacted. And it'll probably be broken. Article 13 will probably be broken by then. But it's, it, I mean, it's something to be aware of. It's something to understand. Uh, if you want more information on this, Cory Doctorow is a science fiction writer. He was, uh, helped found the EFF, the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Uh, he's a very interesting guy. If you go to craphound.com, that's his website. <coughs> He has a podcast every, whenever he remembers to do it. <laughs> <laughs> or whenever he's interviewed, he gets share-alike rights to put it on his own podcast stream. Uh, he's talked about it in the last several episodes about some of the, the questionable decision-making that uh, the, German chan the German member of the EU parliament went through to get Article 13 passed and what he's gonna do, so. Is there an interest for that to come to the... Well, the thing is, 
it, it's not that that's going to come to the U.S., but it's going to affect us because Facebook and YouTube and all these U.S. companies are going to have to adhere to the rules of the European Union. Um, and when when the EU passes something, it's a big enough marketplace that you know it's the tail wagging the dog. Right. <laughs> you know, like, we're just going to go ahead and everybody's going to follow this rule because it's easier for us to make one system for everybody than to try and make a system for France and a system for Germany and a system for the U.S. and a system for Canada. You know, so and IP access is, you know, I could use a VPN and make it look like I'm in England or in Germany or in Russia or in, you know, like, but I'm sitting here in Orlando. There's a reason. <laughs> so it's just why don't we make the same rule for everybody? It's like, uh, what's the GDPR? Anybody remember that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So GDPR applies to all European Union citizens. So if somebody here at one of you know, the law firms that I've worked with or talked to, or we're, we're referral partners, somebody here gets hurt who's from England, or from France, let's say, that company has to follow GDPR if they pick up that case. If they take that personal injury case, because they have a European citizen and it follows the citizenship, not the location. So you use the, Article 13 is basically the same thing. Uh, since it follows European citizenship and not, you know, a, a French person has to follow French law. So why don't we just make it whatever the law of France passes? That's what we're gonna we're gonna adhere to that system. So, like I said, it'll be fought out in the courts. It'll take years decades for it to be decided on. It'll probably get stricken down between now and then because a lot of the people in the EU Parliament didn't understand what they were voting for or voting against. They thought this side, wait, wait no, everybody said I should vote for this side because that's the one that gets rid of it. Oh wait, no, that's the one that oh, makes it apply? I don't, yeah. Yeah, politics are fun. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, so, we were talking about putting these in our blog, things like that, mm -hmm. on our website. How about social media, Facebook, uh, uh, LinkedIn, you know, are images there a little bit more free to be posted uh, because it's not directly linked to our website? Like, but it's linked to your name. Okay. So, yes and no. Facebook will always put the onus back on you. Um, so if you're running an ad on Facebook and it uses something from Getty Images that you didn't buy from them, that you got from Google Images, uh, Facebook's gonna say, oh, that ad belongs to Tom. You, you go after him. And if it's not an ad, if it's just a reply, If it's, if it's a post, yeah. is, are Getty gonna care? Yeah, like that, that gets buried that. so fast yeah, yeah. that, you know, like, will they ever even notice? Probably not, should you do it? Probably not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Another one is, um, so I've been blogging for three years now. Uh -huh. um, I've gotten images from different places, different we all have. Uh, yeah. things that you need at the time, you buy it for here, there, right. and everywhere. Is there a way to check? I know that Google has images thing to check and see where those other images are in use on the internet. Yeah. Is there something that you would recommend that we go back and maybe check some of the images that we don't so know? So the easiest way is to you know, right click copy link for your image, mm -hmm. and then post that in the Google image search, and it'll show all the places where that image is used. Okay. So then that's what Getty basically does, is they have a they, they have a program that runs that, you know, yep. uh, and sees where it pops up, that did we get paid by this website or not? Uh, so that, that's all programmatic on there, and if you've been blogging for a long time, you can do it yourself, it'll probably take a while, or yeah. you can, you know, hire some kid for, from full sale, <laughs> call it an internship and make that his job. <laughs> If they say, okay, so one of those places where you go and it's like, I'm downloading this icon of a, fa like a Facebook well, I mean, icon. Actual, they're actual pictures mm -hmm. of, you know, like uh, a woman out on the beach or, you know, like we use it for our, um, what is it, our website. Mm -hmm. Cause it says free stock. I mean, I've read everything. Sure. Yeah. Like terrified. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm just kind of. You have a right to be because you work for a very big, a big group. Yeah. Um, Keep your records of where you got it. That's yeah. the easiest way. If it says free stock images and their site says like and they have it on their site and you downloaded it from their site and 
uh, there's probably a marker on the image, on the uh, EXIF data, that shows that where it came from, but keep your records where you downloaded stuff from, uh, just to make sure. I'm sure all those places that make you sign up and give them your email address to get those, if I'm correct, no? Wow, they're missing out on the trick there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, um, once, you know, once I click the photo, it's nice if you want more stock images that, you know, then you have, have to a, sign big, up. a bigger variety uh -huh. of pictures, mm -hmm. then you do pay for those, and it has getting images on there and things like that, yeah. and iStock or something. Right, but right. Pexels, it says it's free. Yes, they are. And those, okay. those, those <laughs> ones are probably, like, they probably got them from Wikimedia or someplace else themselves. Uh, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. That said, it, as long as you keep your records of where you got stuff, you know, that's why I put uh, image credit where on any blog post that I use, somebody's from Flickr, you know, image credit from, you know, Mario the Plumber, you know, link back to his pic his uh, Flickr account just so I remember. I don't have to keep it, you know. But yeah, if that, that's an easy way to do it. If you don't want to do that, uh, you know, you can write yourself an email with the, the image in it. Just send it to yourself, archive it immediately, so you can go back into your email and look. Okay, and then my next question, sorry, for any no. um, product images. So um, obviously all of our stuff is donated, but mm -hmm. we, you know, we just recently got in a Burberry purse that is authenticated real. Right. Um, and one of my listeners says, hey, I found this exact same purse on a model uh -huh. somewhere out in Google. Can I put that on your nope. site? That's what I said. Okay. <laughs> just wanted to verify. Okay, got it. Get a light box, put the pit, put it in there, make it look do, real fancy, you know. And that's what we do for all of the other, yeah. you know, products that we uh -huh. have, but we always like to get a model in there. And so I said, use one of the other, you know, yeah, yeah, listeners uh, we have, you know. Put it on your own shoulder, go stand exactly. in front of a blank wall. Yeah, no, okay. don't, don't. Yeah. Got it. Okay, so, did you have a question? Yeah, so, it's like a couple of questions as well. No, go for it. So I, um, so I have actually a photographer that works for me at my business. Uh -huh. um, so he, Those are your images. Right. You pay him. Yeah, I pay yeah. him. And so we use a lot of our, I use some stock images because oh, yes. I can't just get like dog on a beach. You know, um, <laughs> I mean, I'd love to take a field trip, but so I just you know, use some stock images that I buy, but I use a lot of my own images. Um, but I don't just post an image. Sometimes I'll have like, it's heart one awareness month. It's, mm -hmm. You know, pet CPR month. You use like Canva that. and put so all that I, stuff yeah, on top Canva, of it. I yeah. do all that, and I oh, and I put my logos uh -huh. on them. Um, but I'm not registering those. Like, and I really feel like, like somebody said, steals it, it or shares it. I don't care. Like, it's, if, if you don't care, then don't bother. Why bother? Okay. Especially if you've got your logo on it. You know, okay. I want that shit. Yeah. I, right. I, you know, uh, the, the the QR code on here. <clears throat> Put that on your phone. It links to my personal profile. It links to my site on our webpage. It links to my Twitter, our Twitter, Instagram, everything. Like, I, it links to a file download of this. Yeah, uh, uh, I can't remember the name of the program that I got it from, but yeah, like, please okay. take this. It's got our logo right there. Share it everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then once I'm using the, one of the images that I bought or that uh -huh. I get from one of those free sites that right, you yeah. know. It's okay for me to alter it, right? Because I have the rights. If you have to read the licensing agreement, okay. some of them will say you can alter this in any way you want. Right, and my, my some of them I just put text on and like right, logo yeah. and, but yeah. some of them will will say no, you can't. So just read the individual license. Uh, usually, the ones from like iStock Photo and Big Stock and all those guys, yeah, you can do whatever you want. That's why you're paying them okay. every month, is so that you can use those images in what in your social media. Okay, um, and then my last part of that question is, I actually took my business over from previous owners, mm -hmm. so the business has been around since 2011. I've been on a really interesting journey to find all this old stuff buried in the website. Right, yeah. Um, and so, like, they have been blogging for all the years, you know, That's since impressive. 2011, and um, there's a lot of old content and images and you know, I'm unsure of their origin, and now that they're completely retired and their interest in answering my questions is <laughs> really well. Um, so, is, you know, do you think I should like take some time or maybe get an intern to like kind of scrub that? Yeah. Okay. It's also, you want to do that for your own peace of mind as far as the images or the text and everything are concerned. It's also not a bad idea to refresh that old copy uh, to update it for today, just from a marketing aspect, that's probably a good idea to, you know, bring yeah. that back into the loop and, you know, oh, that's a great idea. We should talk about how 10 years later, the world has changed about that. 
not the particular thing. I know it's, you know, there's probably not a whole lot that's changed in the dog care or the pet yeah. care market, but what do I know? I'm not the expert on that, you are. Right. <laughs> so, but mo like most important, I think any images. Like the, that's probably your most important thing. Like I said, images are probably the most stolen thing online. Um, but you know, it's still not a bad idea to go in there and refresh it in other ways, just to get Google to say, hey, that, that got updated. Maybe they, there's something important. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you could put like an update, new information with a link to someplace else on your website, that's probably not a bad plan either. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to bounce that with a couple questions just for clarity. So as a photographer, if I'm photographing an event, mm -hmm. um, they don't have the right to modify those but I don't copyright them, so how does that? Did you pay to get into the event? And what were the rules around your paying to get into the event? I guess it just depends, like wedding photography, for instance. <coughs> like, I always say, please cut it back to us, this uh -huh. and that, but the client always assumes that the photos are theirs. Are the photos theirs? What does your licensing agreement say when you sell the photos that to it's them? Not. So that it's not. It is so to, that it is up to you. Okay, so. and then um, as an Instagrammer, people do take my photos and share them, they don't cut it back. But those aren't copyrighted either, so. Why are they? So, like, they're sharing, like, they're doing that share thing on their Instagram? No, sometimes or they just, like, screenshot and take in, they just don't credit back. Is that just improper etiquette? That's or? just the. <laughs> I know, there's. It Good luck going it. after them on Instagram. I you, know. You, you can. Is it worth your time? Yeah. Is it worth your I'm energy? Wondering. And I thought uh, they would take my logo too and put it on their event that I wasn't involved with. And well, if they're taking your logo and putting it on their event that you're not involved with, was it a positive event or was it a Nazi rally? <laughs> you know? yeah. Like if it's another, if it's an influencer event and they're saying, hey, look, she's involved, that increases your, like that's, that's a, you know. That's a good thing. <laughs> which one is it? You know, like does it increase your, your market share? I wouldn't go after them. Does it put a negative spin on who you are or does it like not represent you in a bad way? Then maybe you want to tell them, don't do that. But the only way to do like a takedown notice or whatever is if the items were copyrighted, basically. No, be, like I said, okay. copyright begins at creation. Okay. So if those are yours and you use like if, for your logo specifically, especially if you use that across all of your media, like it's always on your pictures, it's always on your branding, it's always on your website. I would go after them if you don't want them to use it. You know, if you want somebody to write a takedown. I'll Give you James's number right now. No, but like, you like, pick and choose your battles because. But yeah, definitely. So petty, as yeah. with anything, pick and choose your battles. Like, uh, as attorneys, we don't take on every client because maybe it'll cost us more to sue this company than it would than we potentially get back. Yeah. Uh, you, like you don't take like if somebody walks in our door with seventeen DUIs, you know, and they have you know hundred dollars in the bank. Are we going to take that on as a client? Probably not, unless there's a really, really good reason, compelling reason, compelling reason. Um, now, if they have a hundred thousand dollars in the bank. <laughs> so if I like walked in so, and said this person shared my post and didn't credit me or whatever, I mean obviously that's not even worth. It, it, is into. what's your time worth? And what's your energy worth? And that's, you know, yeah. like you know, uh, what's the, the the senator who had you know so and so's cow? Uh, you, he went after a couple Twitter accounts because they were making fun of him, and now those Twitter accounts have more followers than he does. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah. yeah. It, 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 what's your time worth? He thought it was worth going after these guys who were making fun of him. If he had ignored them, they would be nothing. Because he paid attention to them, they have 150,000 followers. He has 43. <laughs> so, what's your time worth? So going back to the Creative Commons thing, especially mm -hmm. on yeah. Flickr, um, so I'm familiar with that process having done it before, and as I recall, because it's been a couple of years, you actually can filter that to um, Creative Commons commercial use allowed, I believe, um, but it's been a couple of years. But the question yes. really is, if somebody puts an image into Creative Commons and you use it, can they two years later take it out of Creative Commons, or is that a permanent designation? They can, but they're s foolish to do so. <laughs> because, I mean, I've actually had this happen when I worked at uh, the hosting company. We had a client who you know, found an image on Flickr or wherever, uh, and they used it on their website, and they accredited the artist. And the artist decided to go back in Flickr and change all their pictures to you know, regular licensing. 
and then they tried to go after this guy and he's like, wait, I got this, you know, when, when I built my site three years ago, this was a Creative Commons license. Like I, entry, I you know, put the attribution, I put the CC logo, I put all that stuff on there. Like, why are you coming after me? Well, it's not under the Creative Commons license anymore. So it's at the time of the original use. Like there, there's a legal argument to be made, of course, you know, like, like his lawyers would say something different than our lawyers would say. But uh, at the time that he put it on his site, it was Creative Commons, he had every right to use it. Is a law firm going to defend him for an $800, you know, fee or probably a $150 fee? They'll write a takedown, but you know, unless he pays more than that, it's not. They're not going to do much else. So yes, they can. Should they? Not in my opinion. It's, it's, it's they're walking into a, a a minefield to do so. Right. So yeah, let me just show you. What do we want to search? Let's do the. Uh, <laughs> so right here, any license, so all Creative Commons, commercial use allowed, mod allowed, commercial and mod, no known copyright to script, the, that means it's probably in the public domain, and then U.S. government works, so anything. Cool. Easy, it's quick. I, if there's not a picture of it, use a different search term. <laughs> about resale apps and similar um, and you, with the question about model all of them are using branded model photos so like a lot of, of yeah you know I, I know so um, so if you get a picture from like Nordstrom they probably got that picture from Burberry yeah so like if, if anybody's selling a Burberry purse they probably got those images from Burberry so it's always the same models with the same person, the same pose, because it's the same picture, mm -hmm. because they got it from the source. So, but by because they're selling it, you know, from their official sales company brand, whatever, for Burberry, they got you know they were allowed. To. Um, if but look, my question is more like yeah. because hundreds of thousands of users are posting copyrighted material, is the organization like Poshmark, for example, is an app yeah, that's no. heavily. Is there any liability for them if a company? They pass the liability on to you, the seller, and they will say that in their end user license agreements and their you know all the contracts that you agree to when you that you don't have seven years to actually read through. Uh, they, right. they, like Facebook, everything you post, if there's a problem with it, it's on you. Yeah. You know YouTube, if you post everything, you know we're going to take it down if it's got copyrighted works and we catch it. If we don't, and somebody comes after you, it's on you. So I'm assuming the issue is just that it's not worth their time to go after individual people then. Most of the time it's not, but sometimes it is. It, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's again, they, they pick their battles just like you should, or just like she should. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, is it worth your time and your energy to go after? Like, you know, they came after Tom because he owns a media company. You know, he probably can afford 800 bucks. It's probably, not, it's probably cheaper for Tom to pay that $800 than it is to freak out about it. And a lot of times uh, it's just ignorance. People just don't, are just, I hate to say right. it, stupid. I, I mean, they just don't know they can't share this without, you know. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I, I, most people get in trouble because they didn't know they shouldn't be. Right. Yeah. Like, we got, like, the attorney who posted a copyrighted image on our site. You know, they came after us because we were a law firm. Sure. You know, was it, if, if it had been on my personal blog, would they have come after me? Probably not. You know, but they saw a law firm. They said they probably got a, you know, a bank account. But ignorance can't be a defense, right? And ignorance yeah. is not a defense at all. Just because you don't know the law doesn't mean you didn't break it. And you will be held accountable for breaking the law. It's, it's so bizarre. Because if you think about all the stuff you share or acquire and share on your Facebook blog, uh -huh. like, I was even thinking about a meme that if Tom Craig posted on the TC, <laughs> it wasn't me. My fault. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get that from? And we don't even think twice about that. It's no, like, oh, I it's mean, on the internet. It's got to be, you know, it's got to be mean, all. All of those gifts, like when you do, you know, reply and gift, are those copyrighted? Yeah, because most of mine are like from the office or. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, somebody made that. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how many times I've shared that. You know, look at. Yeah. <laughs> like, but yeah, I, I don't like. But Facebook's providing that image to me, so I assume they did do their due diligence. Right. With that, um, and also. 
So there's also a timeline for some things, like certain works, if you use less than three seconds or less than 30 seconds, you don't have to reference the artist. I always say reference the artist. I always say, you know, if you think you have to pay for it, pay for it or buy it legitimately. But uh, I, I don't know the exact number of seconds, but certain, like some music, you can play a snippet of it as like your intro or outro music without referencing somebody. Um, don't, just don't, just buy it, you know? <laughs> or go to, uh, what was the, go to uh, Bandcamp. Somebody's got, you know, intro and outro music that you can use for free as long as you tell them where you got it, so. Other questions? No, my mind is just racing out. Uh, I, no, I need to go check this and that. I have another question yeah. about music. Yeah. So with copyright, if you're copying someone's song, let's say for an audition, then that's allowed because it's... Is it a live performance? Well, I mean, it's performed in front of the people you're auditioning for. <laughs> so it's, it's a live performance. But it's not something that people are paying for. Yeah, but it's a live performance. Yeah, uh, the band, the, uh, not, um, Bare Naked Ladies. They, uh, when they go, go to any Bare Naked Ladies con concert, and they will cover 17 songs in three minutes during one of their, you know, during, um, because it's a live performance, because they're, it's a performative work, they are making their own thing. It's a transformative work, so it does, isn't copyrightable. Now, if they record that and try to sell it, yes. the Beatles are coming after them. Yeah. <laughs> you know? so, so, yeah, live performance, you're fine. Uh, trying to make money off of that. <laughs> but you know, only point, point this out because I just think it's interesting. I have a friend of mine who owns a restaurant, and he was telling me that they can't just play music in their restaurant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't realize that. Yeah, and recently. there are people who go to restaurants yeah. and listen and then check to make sure that you're paying for all of that. Right. And he said that even applies to if you have a guy sitting on a stool with a guitar performing it live. You have to pay a service. You have to, you know. I was just floored by everything you told yeah. me about this. Mm -hmm. It's actually yoga instructors too. Mm. When they play music for their yoga classes, there's licensing fee for that. Because yeah. I, I, I used to go to a yoga studio that like all of a sudden one day they're like, we're not playing music anymore. Because uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> somebody came in, paid 45 well, bucks for a cool. session, and then decided to sue for 45 bucks. Yeah, sure you can't do the same happy birthday. You know? Yeah. That's no, that's fun. They, they they let go of that. Okay. But up until two three years ago, yeah, that was true. You, Happy birthday was a copyrighted work, and the ladies who wrote it uh, were alive recently enough that it was still under copyright by them. And it's ask is it ask cap and BMI right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Based in community. Mm -hmm. So if you do own a restaurant, you're supposed to be paying those guys in order to play like even yes. serious XM radio. Right? You're right. supposed to be like there are companies that specifically, like he said, that they, they will sell to. I, I was like a waiter and a bartender for years, so like we had this whole big system in the back for you know we could choose what channel, so we could choose what kind of music we paid for. But they were paying you know a couple thousand dollars a month for that system uh, because it was guaranteed it was restaurant music. So yeah, I thought the Happy Birthday song they found that the song actually existed elsewhere. Like I said, they finally gave it up because somebody. Uh, I the think you're right. Version of the song yeah. and found that they should never have had copyright on. <laughs> I don't remember the specifics. I think you're right that there was some confusion on who the actual writer was. Was it this other person or was it them or you know was it the sisters or? But yeah, like, like I said, a few years ago they, they gave up the fight. You know, of saying they and they never actually went after anybody. I don't think the the estate of you know the, the sisters who allegedly wrote it or did write it or didn't. I don't remember. Um, like I don't. Think there's ever been an actual lawsuit from their estate over the singing of that song in her you know public place or anything but it was just one of those oh isn't this funny story more than anything else <laughs> well i'm terrified now <laughs> <laughs> mark that was great thanks yeah that was great.